Now, let's continue these videos on the dying art of plumbing, central heating and gas. In today's video, we're going to take a look at the installation of a cold water storage system that's feeding a vented cylinder. Now, the other two videos I've done are the installation of an F&E system and the installation of a central heating pump. Now, if you haven't seen those videos, I'll put a link down in the description below, so check them out. Anyway, let's get on with it and have a look at the installation of a cold water storage system. Now, first thing, let's have a look at the actual installation and the size of the systems you require. Now then, size of the systems. If you're doing an installation like this, where you've actually got indirect hot water and indirect cold water, then you will need a minimum of 227 litres storage. But if you're only using the stored water for a vented cylinder, then you'll need 113 litres or 25 gallons. And that's because the cylinder itself which is an 18 inch 36 high cylinder holds about 113 litres so the feed system has to be able to fill the actual cylinder itself so 227 litres if you've got cold water and feeding the hot water or if you're just feeding the hot water then you require 113 litres Next is the height of the uh, system from the roof. So on this side where the float valve, the minimum is 350 and on the other side is 500. So they're your minimum distances. Next is like the FNE system, the platform it stood on has to be 150 mil bigger at least than the system all the way around so that size front and back it also needs to be 18 millimeters at least 18 millimeters thick and it needs to be marine ply no chipboard here guys also it has to have a minimum of three rafters and the rafters cannot be more than 350 mil apart also this platform has to be able to take the weight of the cistern when it's filled to the rim not to the top of the overflow and this is because if anything happens to the overflow this uh, platform still needs to be able to take the weight of the water in the cistern so one litre of water weighs a kilogram just remember that so if you have got 227 litres in there then it needs to hold 227 kilograms plus the weight of the system and all the bits attached to it. So that's the platform it stood on. And if you haven't seen the video on the F&E system, then the F&E system must be lower than this system or on at least the same level. For that reason, check out the video down below. Now the cold water in this storage system has to be kept lower than 20 degrees. And the way we do that is by your insulation. So your system will have a jacket, what fits all the way around it and over the top, just like it would do on an F&E system. Also, if we've got loft insulation, Again, we would leave the loft insulation missing from underneath the system so the heat from the room below could also stop the system from freezing. And again, the systems are coloured black to stop algae growing. So, insulation is key. Also, tight fitting lids is key to stop anything getting in to this system because you could be drinking this water, whether it's the hot water or the cold water coming out of the taps. So you don't want any rats or birds or anything actually dying and getting in this water because that could cause a few problems. Also to stop insects getting into the uh, system, 
The vent on the top needs to be screeded and so does the uh, one in pipe overflow pipe also has to have a screen in there and the holes in the screen cannot be more than 0.65 millimeters to stop these insects getting in there. Also the overflow will have a dip tube on it and this dip tube must go lower than the water level and this is to stop cold air coming up the overflow and chilling inside the cistern and causing the cistern to freeze. Now, next thing, the uh, cylinder itself. Again, this needs to be on a platform if it's sat on chipboard. So again, you'll have to span the rafters. Again, you'll have to be on marine ply. And again, it'll have to be a minimum of 18 mil. You cannot fit a cylinder on chipboard because it'll just rot and tilt. So be aware of that. So that's the platforms. Now we have two types of vented cylinders in the UK. We have direct and indirect. And that means whether they're directly heated or indirectly heated. Now a cylinder with a coil in like this one is being indirectly heated. But if a cylinder only has immersion heaters in, then that's directly heated. So the heat source is coming directly in contact with the water in the cylinder, whereas the water in the coil is not coming directly in contact with the cylinder water, it's indirectly. It has to be separated because of things like inhibitor in the water, because you don't want the inhibitor getting into the actual hot water itself. So they are the two types of cylinders, indirect and direct. So technically this cylinder could be the third one, which is both indirect and direct. Anyway, now, height. Now the top of the cylinder to the bottom of the cistern, there has to be a minimum of one meter. So that is, so we don't get any air problems and we get a good flow of water coming in to the actual cylinder. Also, this is our cold water into the bottom of the cylinder. This has to have a drain on it and it has to have a gate valve in there. Now the gate valve has to be higher than the cylinder. Now the reason for this gate valve actually in this line is so we can do any maintenance on the cylinder. So if we needed to remove this immersion heater on the top, then we just need to isolate that valve, open the hot tap just to get rid of the pressure and a little bit of water, and then we can just remove the immersion heater. If the immersion heater is in the bottom, that means we need to completely drain the cylinder as well, and this is what that drains for. So we can isolate it there and we can fully drain the cylinder if we needed to get at an immersion heater in the bottom. On the indirect cold, then we'll need another valve actually in the loft as close as we can to the cistern so we can isolate the cold water so we can do any maintenance on the taps. Now, according to the water regs, the taps don't require service valves. Only an appliance with a flow operated valve requires a service valve or a washing machine, uh, or a combination boiler or a water heater. These are the things that require isolation valves. So we need this isolation valve in case we need to do any work on the taps so we're not completely draining the system. Now, the water level. Like the water level in the F and E system, it's incredibly important this that we set it correctly. First of all, we have to have a minimum of 25 mil from the overflow or the warning pipe to the top of the filled system. Also we need 25 mil difference between the overflow and the top of the float operated valve. Now this float operated valve is a BS1212 and it's got to be a part two, not a part one, it's got to be a part two. 
Now these distribution pipes go into the taps and the feed go into the cylinder we also need to put those at the correct heights. Now because this is feeding the hot water and this is feeding the cold water if they were feeding showers we need the hot water to run out first. So if anything happened to the water coming into the system so what we've got here is the hot water has to be at least 25 mil higher than the cold so the hot water would run out first and then the cold water and that's to stop people getting scolded so that's incredibly important that that when we are doing a combined uh, indirect cold and feeding the hot then they are 25 mil apart and the hot is higher than the cold so it runs out and it's a safety device and obviously the next safety device is the hot water distribution pipe with the vent pipe in there now this vent pipe has to be 450 mil away from the outlet of the cylinder itself the distribution pipe also needs to slightly rise up as well which will allow air to go up and in to the system this is to stop single pipe circulation or parasitic circulation so if our vent pipe went straight up over the top and into there then what could happen is because hot water rises we could end up with the water going over the top and circulating around like that that's single pipe circulation and that means it's wasting energy so as the water comes up and heated, it then cools and then comes back in and it continues doing that, cooling the water. Parasitic circulation is when the water can go up the vent pipe, cool and keep coming back down. It can also do this going up the cold water feed as well, where the heat of the cylinder will rise up, cool down and come back down. So it's losing heat via the pipe. This is why it's also important that for every meter off the cylinder we insulate all the pipes or to where it terminates in a wall floor or ceiling. So a meter off all these pipes would need to be insulated. This also aids to stop parasitic circulation. So if you put it a minimum of 450 mil away from the top of the cylinder that stops this single pipe circulation or parasitic circulation. Also, the vent pipe must be 150 plus 40 millimeters per meter of the system height. That basically means how high does the vent pipe need to go over the system. So it's from the base of the cylinder to the water level, like we've got here. So there's the water, there's the base, so we would need 150 mil higher than the water plus 40 mil for every meter of that distance. So from the top of the water to the bottom of the cylinder, whatever that measures, we need to times that by 40 mil plus 150. And that's how high the vent pipe needs to go over the water level. Also, again, the vent pipe, like in the FNE system it has to be at least two diameters higher than the float valve or the overflow if you're terminating them over those. So that's my quick look at the installation of a cold water storage system. So I hope you like the video and I'll catch you on the next one. Cheers.